All right, welcome back to the Crabby Dice. Today we're looking at the expansion to Haspel Connect called the Ruhr Valley. So what do you get in the box for this one? You're gonna get three distinct modules. All right, the first module here are just new development tiles and all the sort of bits that come with it. The second module are the black development tiles, which is a new row, a fifth row that you're gonna have on top to get new bonuses. And the big module here is the iron module, which adds a new type of resource and a bunch of new things. All right, so uh, before I start though, you can play with any of these incorporate into your base game or all of them you choose however you like to play all right so now how we're going to go through this we're going to go through each of these modules i'll show you how to set it up the rules that go with it and then if i like it or not all right so let's get started all right so the first module are the new development tiles all right pretty simple and by the way you can tell that they're the new ones from the uh, expansion because of the little face on the left all right so this is going to pretty much double up the amount of tiles available uh per uh color all right, so the way I like to set these up, pretty simple, nothing complicated. Just shuffle these in with the base game. Uh, so shuffle these in with the gray tiles, the yellow tiles, so on and so on. And then when you have to draw according to the number of players, you know, just take them out randomly and put them on the board. I mean, the rule book says don't use too many with the expansion ones, but you know what? Just throw them all in. It doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Uh, just a little note, make sure that you're not shuffling in the one with the iron symbols here on the left. Uh, these are the ones that are going to be used only with the iron expansion and that's pretty much it all right so the second module are the black development tiles so these are going to be placed after the brown ones in the display of tiles uh, just a note if you are playing with one of those funky uh, setups from the back of the rule book where you know branches off into different areas just figure out a weird display and just try to make it fit um, some of them are a little wonky so you'd want to play with the regular cascading setup all right, so now what are the special rules with the black development tiles? Okay, a couple of changes. One, first come, first serve. All right, once somebody goes on to a black development tile, no other player can go on that tile. Second is each player can only be on one black development tile. So if green goes here, no other player can go here, and green can't go on another green um, uh, black development tile. All right, so that's uh, rule number one. Second rule is the points you're going to score right away is indicated on the right, and it's per disc on all black tiles so if you're the first one on a black tile you get five points second player is going to get four points the, the fourth player to go on a black tile is going to get two points all right after that you're going to get one of the two bonuses from the black tile so you're going to notice each of these have basically two bonuses on it so you pick which one you want and then after that you're going to see a little black icon here it means grabbing one of these end game scoring chits just pick whichever one you want and most of these just deal with end game scoring so you'll deal with it at the end of the game and that's pretty much what you're going to be doing with this module. All right, and the last module is the iron module, which deals with this new resource um, that we're going to be using in our tunnels. Now, for setup for this module, there's a bunch of things you need to do. First of all, we're going to be playing four rounds instead of three. So you do have this overlay over here to represent the new four rounds. All right, and then you also have this chit to place on top right over here to tell you what the fourth winter uh, tax is going to be. All right, so it's going to be a food, a dollar, and a uh, metal prop. All right, let's put this back for your player board it's pretty simple you just have this overlay board uh, you'll have to decide with all the players whether you're playing the a side or the b side the a side is uh, the same for all the players and the b side are all unique so the four different boards all right so let's just say we decide to play with the a side and you're going to place it over here you're going to overlay everything except for the first two um, cubes all right so it's going to sit like this all right the last changes need to deal with the development board uh, now you are given these three special tiles that deal with the iron uh, props. Uh, it's your choice whether you want to play with them or not. Uh, they're indicated on the left-hand side here if they're for the iron module. All right, I'm not going to play with them. I'm just going to put them on the side. All right, and the last thing you just really just need to validate is that there's at least four coins in the whole display of development tiles. All right, that's just important because you're going to have to pay a lot of coins with the four years, so you do need to have those coins available uh, in the development boards. All right, and after that, you're pretty much ready to start. Now, for the rule differences for this module, all right, when you completely excavate your pinch, so adding your Haspel Connect board, you're also going to add your workshop board. All right, this little uh, tile here. Are right, you going to go to the side of the board? You're going to take one and you're going to put it here. This, in future planning phases, is going to be a spot where you can assign a yellow disc to get an iron ore prop and put it in your farm. And that's how you get them uh, during the game. You also have a spot over here that during the winter you can store one and it'll give you a point. Okay. 
Now, what are these used for? Very simple. These, first of all, can only be used in the tunnel. You can't use them in the pinch area. All right. And these can be placed anywhere, even replacing the wooden ones. And they have to be placed where they're indicated in the tunnel as well. All right. And what advantage these give you is they give you an extra point at the end of the game. If you completely excavate the spots after the metal prop. So for example, uh, if I excavated, let's say my whole tunnel, uh, if I had only one metal prop here, I would get one point. All right. If I had two metal props, I would get two points, you know, so on and so on and so on. But if I didn't excavate this at the end of the game and I put a metal prop, well, it's still going to score me zero points. All right, and then the rest of the game is just going to play like normal. All right, the only addition is you're playing an extra year. All right, those are all the rules to the iron. All right, well, there you have it. All three modules. It's not really that hard to implement all three into your base game. There's one great thing about this expansion is really low uh, rules overhead, no matter which ex modules you want to play with. All right, so like I mentioned at the start, you can play with one, two, or even all three of these modules in your base game. But let me give you my thoughts on all three. All right, first, the new development tiles. This is absolutely necessary. It adds twice as many development tiles into the base game that just wasn't there. Pretty much there was no variety in the base game because if you're playing a four player game, you'll see the exact same tiles every single time. So you must play with these, shuffle them in. It'll change up the strategy just a little bit because new bonuses will come out. Um, just, you know, play with it. Don't even ask questions. All right, the next module is something I only play with with the iron expansion i'll explain you that later uh, but that's just because i mean if you're not playing the extra year from the iron expansion it's just really hard to get up to the development uh row which is the fifth row unless you're doing a development strategy and even that is sort of a broken strategy because it's just too easy to score some points plus you'll score extra bonuses from reaching that level so it just gives you a more of an incentive to just do the development strategy and that just kind of sucks when you're completely ignoring your personal board and not doing any excavation. All right, so that's why I don't play with this every time. All right, I do play with it with the iron uh, board uh, uh, or module. That's just because you do get a lot of points with the iron props uh, at the end game. So it sort of is a, a tandem where you want to do some development and you want to do some excavation. Plus you are playing an extra year so it gives you that extra chance to get to that uh, fifth level and get your um, bonuses from the black developments. All right, and finally, let's talk about the iron module. So this is a module I don't play with every time. Uh, that's just because one of the best parts about Haspel Connect is that the base game you can literally play in under an hour uh, because half the game you can all play at the exact same time. So it's really snappy, there's no downtime. All right, the problem with this module is that because you're playing an extra year, well, there's nothing you can do about that. You are adding 15 to 30 minutes to the game, depending on the player count. Okay. But everything else is pretty good about this module. All right. If I have the time, I would play with it every single time. It does add new ways to get points from the tunnels, tries to combat the development strategy a little bit. So some of these values are higher. Uh, all of these in your tunnels will score extra points at the end of the game. Uh, you even have a space to store it during the winter to score extra points. Different developments can score extra points with these iron uh, um, bars and so on and so on. So it's just really enjoyable. Also, like I said at the start, really low rules overhead, all right? That's one of the best hallmarks of a good expansion. If you can just incorporate it, you know, tweak a little bit of the rules and you're good to go. So that's what this does. All right, so overall, you know, all the expansions are above average. It's a much needed expansion that you can add to the base game and I really like it. And there you go. So click the links below for the other content for this game. If not, we'll see you in the next one. Later.